I tell people that I've been to one of the most remote places on the earth, the first question I usually get is how did you get there? So before I get into the wonderful world of Easter Island, let me quickly tell you how I got to this tiny spot of land that's literally in the middle of nowhere. First, I left my hometown of Wichita for a two hour flight to Chicago, where I saw the Reds beat the Cubs and sang take me out to the ball game at Wrigley Field. The next day, I had a three hour flight from Chicago to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I had a four hour labor, so I headed over to the beach for a bit. Later that day, I flew five hours from Fort Lauderdale to Lima, Peru. I spent six days in Peru that I'll highlight later in another video. Then it was a six hour flight to Santiago, Chile. I spent one day exploring Santiago before hopping on a train and heading to the airport where I waited to get on the plane for Easter Island. One of the only ways to get to Easter Island is to take the once a day, five and a half hour flight from Santiago, Chile. Once you take off, you get a great view of the Andes Mountains before hours of just seeing the South Pacific Ocean. My first view of Easter Island out of the window certainly gave me a thrill, and I realized I would soon be where few people ever get a chance to visit. I've never personally known anyone who had been to Easter Island and couldn't wait to get on the ground. Almost immediately upon arriving at the airport, you get a sense that you're somewhere very different. From the homemade transit sign to the open air concourse, I was excited to finally be here and get to exploring as soon as possible. Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui, is so small that it basically only has one town called Hangaroa. And I walked there from the airport to find my Airbnb. After dropping off my bags and saying hi to the many dogs outside my door, I took a short walk to check out the nearby coast. I also got my first glimpse of a moai, the monumental statues that number nearly a thousand on this tiny island. The end of my first day ended up on the popular spot of Ahu Tahai in one of the most spectacular sunsets I've ever seen. This video just can't do it justice. On day two, I decided to rent a bike and ride around the one road the island has and was immediately greeted by some of the many wild horses along the way. After about a 10 kilometer ride along the coast, I arrived at Renoa Raroku, one of the most popular places to see dozens of moai along the hillside. From the top of this hill, off into the distance, I saw my next destination, Ahu Tongariki. There are 15 moai in this location. Some of them are among the largest on the island. If you stand here long enough, eventually your mind will wander to try and understand how and why these were built. There are many stories that are told about these statues, but no one knows for sure. And that's one of the magical things about Easter Island. After another 10k or so of riding, I came upon one of the only beaches on Easter Island, Anakina. According to traditions, this was the landing spot of the first people to settle on the island nearly a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. 
After completing the island circuit, I was back in the main town of Hangaroa, where I found the quirky local cemetery with some of the most unusual burial places I've ever seen. The rest of the day was spent walking around town and taking in the unique and beautiful sights. At the end of the day, I found a quiet spot all by myself to take in another spectacular sunset. Day 3. I decided to hike. I wasn't 100% sure where I was going, but I had a map and a college degree and figured I was smart enough to be able to find my destination of Orongo. I took what I thought was a shortcut, and after a long, 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 long walk, I was certain I was lost. But there was a path, and I kept following it. Eventually, I saw the ocean, but not Orongo. Finally, out of seemingly nowhere, I'd come upon one of the most spectacular sights I've ever seen. I ended up going all the way around the other side of this volcano where very few people ever venture. What a wonderful mistake I made. I sat at the edge of that cliff for a long time that day. I'm definitely not a religious person, but that was one of the most spiritual moments of my life. I had dinner that night while watching local youth play soccer on the only field on the island. And of course, I found the only bit of track surface within thousands of miles in any direction. For my last night on the island, I decided to take in a show where locals perform traditional dance and music routines. There are only a few thousand people that call Easter Island home, but the pride in their culture is as great as anywhere I've ever seen. <laughs> The next day, it was time to head back to mainland Chile. Mataveri Airport is as small and laid back as you would imagine. When I started walking out to the plane, I had an unusual feeling. Normally, I am excitedly looking forward to the next destination on the itinerary. But this time, I took a last look back at Easter Island and was sad to be leaving. I'm always trying to find new and interesting places I've never been. And this was one of the first places that I promised myself I would come back if I ever had the chance. Until next time, Easter Island, I'll be seeing you again. <laughs>